Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we're talking about the Vermont and how she's doing after she received her buffs in the previous update a few days ago. So, a quick summarization of these buffs is that essentially her acceleration deceleration time was cut almost in half. Uh, some internal bits were strengthened to reduce the amount of just insane chunks being taken out of the ship when she would be... Not even really slap, but just, you know, someone chunks the AP, the AP, well, yeah, someone chunks their AP into her superstructure, and they could rip, like, 18, 19k off beforehand, and she was also given the Massachusetts heal, meaning that the cooldown time on her heal was cut down to 40 seconds, instead of, I think it was 80 or 90 seconds beforehand. So, this has been a massive buff to the ship's survivability for sure oh and her detectability range was, was reduced so that if you do have a full concealment build on the ship your detection range on this massive floating island is 12.6 kilometers yeah that's giving the british a run for their money in terms of ridiculousness <laughs> i mean the ship's literally like I mean, look at it. It, it takes up most of my screen, uh, much more than other tier 10 battleships do, and this thing gets a 12.6 kilometer concealment. Seems a little silly, but it's something that the ship definitely needed. Because beforehand, this ship was absolutely just a, a damage pinata. This is the ship that all gunboat DDs, battleship players, CV players wanted to run into because you can absolutely farm this thing to no end beforehand and murder it quite easily now it's still a major damage pinata but it takes a lot longer to kill it now you're, you're going to be seeing two games in the background here um and they pretty much sum up how the vermont is today pr pretty well the first game you should be watching um it's kind of a rollover match it's one that took a little bit longer to unfold but i didn't even have to use my heel on this match it was one of those matches and the other match that you're going to be seeing in the background, or a clip from that match, is going to be showing the strength of the Vermont now that she got those survivability buffs. But, overall, the Vermont. She's much better to play today than she was before the patch. You're not going to be getting burnt out as easily or slapped out of the match as easily thanks to that Massachusetts heal, that 40 second cooldown time. And if you're running the... Um, the flag, and even if you want to build into it, you can get that round to, I think, 35, 36 seconds. That's kind of nuts, but yeah, that, 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 that is a huge buff. That's one reason why Massachusetts is so good at brawling, because it can just pop that heel and keep going and keep pushing. And the same for the Vermont here. You're getting farmed, you ate a big chunk of damage, just pop that, and then in 40 seconds, literally by the time your guns have reloaded, because this thing has a 40 second reload time on her 12, 457 millimeter guns, your heel's already back up and ready to go. And the acceleration, deacceleration buff is much welcome. Beforehand, it took this ship, god, I, I don't even want to know how long it was beforehand, but it's much quicker now on the pickup. It's, well, a 50% a buff to the acceleration deceleration which means you get going a lot faster and you also get going in reverse a lot faster and you stop a lot faster too so it's not you know the best ship at it but she can kind of throttle juke a little bit now at range when she's doing at range and of course when we're talking about gunfighting at range you know the shells have like a 15 20 second uh, flight time sometimes so you do have time to get out of the way and you know drop the drop the anchor and turn your ship one way or another to throw off the enemy's shots at range so she can do that a lot better now too and the concealment buff is very welcome 12.6 kilometer concealment is very nice you can choose to disengage much easier now than beforehand of course too however it's not all fantastic because Pretty much what I said in the video going over these buffs when they are announced is the case that I'm seeing in game. Yes, the acceleration and deacceleration buff was nice. Yes, the consummate buff was nice. Yes, the uh, the improvement to the heal and the strengthening of the internal bits is very nice. But at the end of the day, the ship just really can't keep up. I mean, this is still a tier 10 ship that if you don't have the speed flag on her, you're going to be going, what is it, 21, 22 knots? 
And in today's World of Warships, where the games are ending in six, seven, eight, nine minutes now, instead of going on to, you know, like 12, 13, 14 minutes, like they certainly seemed like they used to back in the day, um, you're still slow, exceptionally slow. And they did replace the shells, too, with the shells of Connecticut, which are apparently the Ohio shells. So they're slightly slower at range, and they lost around 25, 26 millimeters of pin at range, too. So they're slightly worse. It's not like they were, you know, amazing beforehand and they've been bonked with a nerf bat, but they are slightly worse at range now, too, which I found odd that they're trying to tool the ship for a more close and engaging battleship to the point to where they're doing that to the shells, making them slightly worse, but they don't give her any type of compensation for that in terms of, like, her speed or maybe a slight buff to her reload time, which, I mean, it is 12, 18-inch guns, so I can understand why they're hesitant to you know, give it, like, a one or two second buff, but, I mean, yeah. Um, and, and the shells still do take quite some time to get there. They are still American battleship shells. They travel at 732 meters a second, which is definitely a slower s set of shells for a ship that is supposed to be a good long-range sniper. And that, of course, means that the enemy ships have plenty of time to, you know, maneuver, as I'm sure you're seeing here. Now, granted, I'm not the best um, aimer in this game. I'm certainly not going to say that I am, but it is still very frustrating, you know, going from, like, a Yami or, like, it's super frustrating going from the Russian ships than, uh, than going to this one, because this one feels like the shells are, like, traveling backwards sometimes. They're so slow. But anyway, so they did all that, and... Yeah, again, she's still much better. She's going to live for a lot longer, and you can get closer in this thing and still do fairly good. Now, this thing at close range, too, it's no slouch. 12 18-inch guns in your face from, you know, 12 kilometers down, it's going to hurt, especially if you're a cruiser. And yeah, they're 457mm guns, so not 460, so you can't overmatch 32, but again, from 8, 9, 10 kilometers, they're going to find something to bite into. 12 18-inch shells are going to find something to, to bite into, but you can't really get into those situations. It's not like the GK or the Schlieffen or the Preussen where, you know, they're rocking and rolling at 30, 32 knots and they can close the gap. If they would buff this thing's speed to like a 25 knot base speed, I think it could work because that's where the Atlantic goes at the um, dockyard ship, the Pan American Super Dreadnought. That's where she's at and she's able to still either close the gap or at least kind of keep up with the targets that she's pursuing or that she's trying to engage. But in the Vermont, everything outruns you at this tier. So she's a lot better. She's a lot more comfortable to play. I will give her that. And as you'll see in the second clip, whenever it's going to play, she's exceptionally, exceptionally more survivable now. In the second match, I had almost like 3 million potential damage. Because I was the CV's chosen plaything. And that's the other thing about the Consumit too. The Consumit's nice, but the second the CV gets involved... <laughs> what are you going to do? Especially in this scenario, when the CV decides that I'm the one that he's going to farm his damage on this match and pad his stats with. And I'm just constantly spotted. Now, that, again, does show how survivable the ship is now. Because I, I had a Yami, a Palmern, a Sovesky Rosaya... Um, and the CV all just absolutely going after me. And yeah, I, I lived for a very long time. Much longer than I had any business surviving. And absolutely, in old Vermont, this would have been a death sentence. I would have been dead before I could even probably get like my second heal off in, in this scenario. So yeah, she's a lot more survivable. She's a lot more comfortable to play. But she still just can't get into those close-in engagements unless the team or the the ship that you're going at has decided that they're going to try to cr uh, close the distance on you too. Now again, at closer range, those uh, increased acceleration and deacceleration de times are going to come in handy. You can of course play with your throttle, try to throw off their approach and such. Now again, it's not a sports car, but it's better than what it was beforehand. But again, you aren't going to be able to get into that situation. That situation have to come, is going to have to come to you. And in today's World of Warships and the current meta at high tier, that doesn't happen a whole lot. It does happen, but not a whole lot. Most matches are like the two matches you see here, where not until either the second half of the game or at all 
you have these scenarios pop up. Now, if she can make it there a lot easier, sure. But again, it's just... Ah, the ship is so close to being a very nice medium range ship. If they would give her that little bit of speed boost in her um, stats, just bump it up three more knots, I think she would be in a very nice position. But until they do that, she's much more survivable, but she's still pretty frustrating to play. Now, if you like the sniping playstyle, you're probably still going to love it. You're absolutely going to love this buff. If you've liked the Vermont beforehand, you are going to love it. The gun performance loss is absolutely minimal. It's very similar to how she performed beforehand in terms of her in, in terms of her performance at range and such. Just a little bit of of uh, penetration loss and a little bit of slower shells. So, if you love Vermont beforehand, you're really going to love this buff. But for those of you that were wondering, hey, is Vermont like this amazing mid-range ship now? She's not. She's still. Again, if you enjoy that that long range play style, she's still very, very, very good now. But if you're thinking she's going to be some type of like island of doom, which is what I want her to be, I want her to be some type of island of doom. That's you know these 12, 18 inch guns are slowly approaching you, and God help you if you get caught, uh, if you get caught off guard, and now the ship's closing the distance to you, you're going to have a very bad time. But it's now, it's just, oh, a Vermont, so let me just turn around and, and run, or even just throw into reverse, in the case of some <laughs> ships at higher tier. But anyway, guys, that's my two cents on the Vermont buffs. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 40,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.